Uh, thanks for the kind introduction. Thanks for the mention of the Afro. If you want to see it on a website, you can imagine all the campaigns I've been through that, that my Afro has made it into some of the internet sites uh, not in a favorable way. It even had its own site for a while. Uh, <laughs> and it's titled, I don't know if it's still up, I'm Fro Brownback. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so if you want to see that. My mom never liked that haircut, and it, it led me to the lesson, always listen to your mother. She was right. That was a bad haircut for me. I, I just did, I should have listened to my mother. And, but she said I was awfully proud of that, and I, I guess I was at the time. Right now, I'd just be happy to be able to grow it again. That would be, uh, be nice to do. Let me get right to the meat of the matter. Uh, about two years ago, I was in a meeting with a number of other Republican governors. We were meeting with George W. Bush. I asked uh, the former President Bush at that time, I said, what's the biggest long-term problem facing America? Just thinking with his perspective and the knowledge and information he had from years of service and, and level, the highest levels, uh, what's the biggest problem long-term facing the country? You know what he came back and said? Decline of the family. That's what he said. Uh, and you look at it, and you look at the numbers, and you've seen them, and you guys are at the heart and soul of the leadership of the pro-family movement, which thank you, and I want to, I should have said this at the outset, thank you, thank you, thank you for fighting for families, thank you for hanging in there, keep doing it, it's an important fight, and you've got to win, and we've got to win this, and you're going to do it. It is critically important for the long-term future of this nation. If we, if we, we've got to win this fight about the family and that the family is critically important and we need to talk about it and we need to engage the public and we need to engage it in every form and every fashion we can. We need to do so lovingly and caringly, but we've got to engage. We've got to fight on this. This is important for the future of the nation. And there's times I'm going to sit back and just cry when you see about the decline of number of children, number of children now born out of wedlock in the country. What are we at, 40% uh, now? When you see the, the, the consequences of these sort of things, and not saying that you can't uh, grow into a, a wonderful human being born into a single parent uh, family, but the odds get against you. And not saying that every child born into a, a stable two-parent family is going to turn out great, because they're not. But just that the, you want, we want to have as many kids as we can being raised in as good a setting, as good a, a situation as possible. And to do that, we have to talk about families. We have to talk about family structures. We have to talk about the importance for it. And we've got to convince America that this is something we, we need to do. America is constantly reinventing itself. You just think about the various movements in this country that you have witnessed about how America reinvents itself on a regular basis. So when I first started uh, as Secretary of Agriculture, uh, there was smoking in all of the state office buildings uh, and in the offices in the Capitol. And what capital in America today is smoking allowed? I remember uh, uh, I came in and brought in one of the first no smoking policies. The assistant secretary smoked cigars. It was great for the first two minutes. Uh, you know, and after that, it was kind of tough. And, but, you know, we, we moved forward in that. I went into one of the offices, and not everybody liked it that we were changing policies on this. One of the guys I worked with smoked regularly. I walked into his office. He saw me coming. He was smoking. He opened the desk drawer up, threw a cigarette in, and shut the door <laughs> so that I wouldn't see that he was smoking until the desk started smoking uh, and then figured out what was going on. But think about that, teenage pregnancy and the decline in teenage pregnancy. The country constantly is reinventing itself. Once it's convinced there's a problem and there's a way to solve it, we need to convince people that this is a problem of what's happened to our family structure and there's a way to solve it. And I've got a policy metaphor for you to work on that I think is a great opportunity for us to work in. And it's poverty reduction. It's going at the issue of poverty in the United States. I'm going to fly out from here to Washington, D.C. to go see a former staff member of mine, Paul Ryan, be sworn in as Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Great guy, great family man, great committed man of faith. Uh, yeah. He deserves a great round of applause, and he's going to do a good job, and that is a tough job. It's a hard job. But one of the key things that he wants to talk about and work on is poverty reduction. And you know, when LBJ started the Great Society, the War on Poverty, many of you aren't old enough to remember this, but you can see it in your history books. Some of us lived through that, the start of that. Remember, we're going to, we're going to reduce poverty. We're going to end poverty. 
And you can go back to when that program started under LBJ to today, and poverty rates in America are roughly the same. After having spent trillions of dollars, it hasn't worked. Now, why hasn't it worked? And what's the policy issue here? Well, I want to take you back to where I grew up, Lynn County, Kansas, eastern Kansas, raised on a farm there, son of Bob and Nancy Brownback, who two weeks ago celebrated their 65th wedding anniversary, uh, which I was very proud of them on uh, doing that. Asked my mom what words of wisdom she had. She said, you know, I, not really any. I just was, when we got married, I didn't think we'd live to be 65, that alone married 65 years. But they raised us on this small farm in Lynn County. We raised corn, wheat, soybeans, pigs, cattle, but mostly they raised children, and we worked together. And it was hard work, and we knew education was important, and family was important. But then I think LBJ must have really had Lynn County, Kansas in mind when he started the War on Poverty, because it's one of the poorest counties in the state of Kansas. And I think he probably thought, you know, we need to help those people out, that we weren't sufficient to be able to solve our own problems, and so we need to help them out. And the, pay, and the checks, welfare checks started rolling into Lynn County, Kansas. And I can take you there today. Poverty is gone. You got now, we were a stable family structure. It's a broken family structure today. Generational poverty, very difficult circumstances in that community today. And of all good intents, but what went wrong? And I submit to you what went wrong was that they, they forgot the basics about what it takes to really get out of poverty. You know what the basics are? It's three things. It's work, it's education, it's family structure. Those are the three big things that if you get them half right, you can get your way out of poverty. And, and that's what was happening in Lynn County. Yes, we had one a generation, but the next generation was able to make it on forward because they knew how to work, we know education is important and family structure is important as well. And that's not to say that everybody in our family is perfect because we're not and we have family problems like everybody else. I think we have to discuss that when we talk about families too. We all have problems. We all have difficulties. But we still should, we still should talk about the ideal in this of a man and a woman bonded together for life in a loving relationship, raising children. That's, that's what we want to talk about, and it's not saying that everybody's going to achieve that or can achieve that, but we need to talk about it in a wholesome and an uplifting fashion and to encourage people, because that's the way we move people out of poverty. And here I want to talk about the poverty. Now, my dad, too, he thought, well, we've got we to gotta get these kids some education. So uh, now for me, he, he thought, you know, the, the lad can talk, so I think what I'll do with him is I'll send him to auctioneering school. And so he can be an auctioneer and farm on the side. So we could do that together. That was, this was my dad's kind of plan for me. Um, so I went to auctioneering school. Uh, it's intense. It was two weeks. Uh, and I became an auctioneer. Actually, I think I could, t I could teach you right now to be an auctioneer. This won't take very long. Okay, so it's, you do it through a series of poems. And then you repeat them faster. So the first one is rubber baby buggy bumpers. All right, so try that one with me together, all right? Rubber, baby, buggy, bumpers. Okay, you're part of the way there. Now the next one's Tommy Atatomus, took two T's, tied to the top of two tall trees. Okay, you can get, you can do it. All right, ready? Tommy Atatomus took two T's, tied to the top, two tall trees. Okay, you're almost there. Now, the, the last one is Betty Botter. And this one goes, Betty Botter bought some butter, but she said this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter, so tis better Betty Botter bought a bit of better butter. <laughs> okay? Now let's do that one. <laughs> All right. And then you rhythm it, too. You know, Betty Botter bought some butter, but she said this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter, so she bought a bit of better butter, put it in her bitter batter, made her bitter batter better. So it is better, Betty Botter bought a bit of better butter. Sold. So, yeah. so that was my dad's plan, didn't work. Uh, and neither did the poverty programs. Neither did the great society. And that's the tragedy. And that's the opportunity for us to come forward today and to say, we've got a solution to this. We've got a way forward. And it's three things. It's work, 
It's education. It's family structure. And I want to talk particularly about family structure, because to me, that's the hardest one of these to talk about. And I want you to engage on these ideals. I think what we need to do is to put forward discussion and talking, both factually and story-wise, the importance of family and family structure. Some of you are doing this on a daily basis now. Keep doing it. We have to keep engaged in this fight. We need the factual basis. I was meeting with researchers last night that are going through the research on this, and the research supports the strength and the need for family structure. But you also have to tell the story. You got to be out there and talking about why this story is important and why it's beautiful, and we've got to keep engaging and keep, put, keep putting that story forward. I saw a movie not too long ago called The War Room that was put together by a church group. I hope some of you have seen it. And it's about prayer. And it's about this lady's commitment to prayer and fighting. And it's a story. It's a beautiful story. It's an encouraging story. And we've got to tell those stories about the family because we've got to get people engaged again to say that this is a very beautiful thing and it's important and it's critical. And we've got to tell the story. We've got to keep engaging that story. You have to keep doing it. We have to keep fighting. The only way we lose is if we stop fighting. Don't stop fighting. And we've got to fight carefully, and, and we've got to fight compassionately, and we've got to fight clearly, but we've got to fight. We've got to fight for the family. And this is a great chance for us to do it because the key to getting people out of poverty involves family. And get involved and be involved in that fight. I'm waiting for somebody to start a radio talk show, a Dave Ramsey type of talk show, where you know he's done all this on how people get out of debt, you know, and people call in on his show all the time about, hey, this is what I did, and I, I sold the motorcycle, and I did this, and I did that, and we paid or got our mortgage paid off. You know, you know the show. Very, very famous. I want somebody to start the show on getting out of poverty, a radio show, call-in radio show, so that people can talk about it. I had a tough re-election campaign this last time around. We're getting ready to close the campaign with ads, and we're trying to figure out which ad do we want to run to be the closer. The closer is the, the one you've got to try to seal the deal with the public. And you know what we put up? Welfare reform. It was a single mom that had been on public assistance that got off of it, got a job, and now she and her family had a brighter future. And that was the one when we poll tested it, when we, we did it in focus groups, that was the one that the public liked the most because they want to see that happen. They don't want people in poverty. They want to see them out of it. And it's an extraordinary opportunity for us to come forward with solutions on programs that have not worked. And a radio show where people call in about, this is my way out of poverty. And it'll involve education and family structure and work. You can do it. Let me close just by saying this. I'd be happy to take comments and questions from people. Two things. Number one, again, thank you for being engaged in the battle. It is critically important. And for running point, you guys are on point and uh, taking this battle forward. It's time to really hit the alarm bell about what's happening to the family in the United States. It's time, and we need to talk about it. We need to use facts and stories and realize, most importantly, it's a cultural discussion. It's a discussion with the culture in the country that has huge consequences, and you're the leader, and it's going to be difficult. There are going to be people that oppose you. A friend of mine was in Calcutta uh, with Mother Teresa before she became famous and was working with her some and saw her going door to door one day asking for contributions for her orphanage. Now I always thought that going door to door in Calcutta asking for money, that just seemed to me like it would be hard to do or hard to get very far, but she was doing it because she was just desperate for funds. And she knocks on this one door and a guy opens the door, looks at her, sees her and sees her with her habit on and knows he doesn't agree with her and he spits in her face. To which she took habit, wiped it off, said that was for me and maybe for my humility or whatever the purpose is. But now I need something for the kids. And he gave her some money. <laughs> and my point of it is to you, this is a tough fight. It's difficult. It can feel very personal. People don't want it to be personal, but it can feel that way. We have to be very understanding that everybody has difficulties in their lives. And so people can, you can kind of feel like they're just kind of spitting in your face about it. But that may be for each of our own humility. This is about the next generation. This is about the kids. This is about the future. It's important we win it and that you keep fighting it. God bless you all.